So I built my PC around the end of last year, 2015, and what I want to talk about today is, since then, some people have come up to me and been like, yo, I'm building a PC, what do you think of these parts? And generally... Literally, almost all of them are on a budget build. Here's the thing I encounter with, though. A lot of people see CPU cooler, think it's important, and decide to get that be one of the most expensive things. And it is depending on what you're doing. However, the amount of people that have told me what they're going to be doing doesn't equal up to what they need. Let me give you a good example. A dude recently asked me, hey, yo, I'm going to be doing editing, gaming, recording, not that much gaming, about probably like five hours a day or like three hours a day and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, so then why do you have a 90 to $120 liquid cooler? And he's like, well, I just assumed I needed something good to lower the temperature of the computer and I assumed I needed that cooler. And I explained to him, I'm like, unless you're getting, because I don't think Skylake processors come with coolers. But other than that, generally the a lot of processors come with already CPU stock coolers. The little blue box inside the little blue box with the processor is a cooler as well. So they put that in there in case you don't want to go get an aftermarket cooler. And the general gist is some people don't do their research. So they just assume, oh, if I go with a very expensive cooler, that means it's good. First of all... Half the people that I've talked to about it don't know how to hook up the cooler. So don't buy, just, that's common logic, okay, all right? Don't buy anything you don't know how to hook up or something like that, all right? Or you don't know somebody to help you with hooking it up or something like that, all right? So there's that. And number two, if you're not going to be doing any overclocking, there's generally no reason to go for an aftermarket cooler that expensive. If you want to go for an aftermarket cooler, you can pick up a very simple very easy cheap aftermarket cooler for around a total of 25 30 ish dollars which will do you just perfectly fine me personally i run with the stock cpu cooler that came with my processor and i run at 30 celsius that's temperature 30 celsius idle between 25 and 30 actually and i have never hit above 50 temperature at playing any games and I've played Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, Battlefield Hardline, Black Ops 3, all those games and I've never hit above 50 degrees Celsius. All right. So what it all comes down to is if you're going to be doing overclocking, you might want to get an aftermarket cooler, but if you're on a budget build, like this dude was on a budget build and he wanted to get a a better processor cuz the processor he chose was a okay as processor, but it wasn't necessarily the processor he wanted. He was like, "Man, I wish I had a bit more money to get that one. And then I basically was like, yo, dude, if you don't get that aftermarket cooler and you drop it down to a $25 aftermarket cooler, just don't get a cooler at all because you can install one later if you want to, right? If you don't get that cooler at all, you then have the extra $90 to $100 to get that other processor you wanted. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right because it automatically comes with a stock cooler. So in the end, we wound up finding out he didn't even need the cooler at all. He removed the liquid cooler and got the overall processor he wanted, which came with a stock cooler. He installed it. He was all happy with it. Everything was all good. In later on down the line, if he worries about his temperatures, he can get a you know cheap $25 aftermarket cooler, throw it in there, and that'll be all good as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, and I'll check you guys next time.